Hey, and welcome back. This is video number eight, and this is kind of a bonus video, but for those of you who want to take it a step further, and rather than using Prezi for just something that sits out on the internet or something for a live presentation, for those of you who want to make an actual video, this is for you. All right, so we're going to talk about how to add voiceovers, how to add background sounds, how to essentially make a video. But for those of you who really want to go all out and you're you're not really looking to make a Prezi to just do a live kind of presentation or just send it to people, you really want to turn this into a video, then you are going to need to have an actual video recording software. So in this case, I am using Camtasia. You can use ScreenFlow for Mac. There are other apps out there as well. But for the most part, I found Camtasia tends to be the best. Um, I've tested Camtasia on the Mac. I really like it. I feel like it has evolved and become better. And maybe it's just a little bit of a preference, but I've used Camtasia for a long time and um, that's what I use. Now, here's the thing. Here's a little trick I found. You can use browser or you can use the Windows or the Mac app. Now, when it came to classic Prezi, I found that utilizing the actual downloadable Windows or Mac app was easier, but that times have changed. And if you click on Prezi and we go with Prezi next and click on present, this is what it looks like. So in reality, I found that they've made Prezi next uh, very, very easy to use and you can either use a browser version or you can use the Windows or Mac app. So if you're now if you're using the classic Prezi, then what I found is it's just easier to use the downloadable Windows or Mac app. If you're using Prezi next, it doesn't matter. You use browser or you can also use the downloadable app. Both actually work. So learn from me because, you know, I've recorded many videos and uh, since then made a lot of Prezi's and the Prezi's are the classic Prezi's were actually very difficult to record uh, because a lot of times the reason why was a lot of times the browser app, um, things would just get in the way and it'd be really hard to record. So I think things have evolved over the years, but that said, you will need to have Camtasia or ScreenFlow. So in order to do this, you will need obviously to dish out either $150 to $300 to get access to these softwares. You will also need to have a microphone, either a USB microphone or a more professional microphone. I believe with Mac computers, you can easily use the, uh, the microphone earbuds. You can use those as well to record a video. But all you do is just go into presentation mode. Now that you have an idea of Prezi Classic versus Prezi Next, all you have to do is click present. Now you'll notice that if I put my mouse down here, this little thing pops up and then you're wondering, okay, how do I get rid of this little bar? So to get rid of it, you just put your mouse back up here and you click. So you can see that my mouse is, is hiding. So before actually when I was recording the other videos, I, my mouse was over here and it was hiding. So that's kind of how to do it. Now with Camtasia, let me go over to Camtasia. You are going to want to use, and I can't really show that now, but you're going to click on record the screen and you want to use full screen. So you want to show or record the whole screen. And then typically after that, once you have recorded it, you want to get it down to 1280 by 720 editing dimensions, which is uh, HD quality standard. And another thing is depending on how big your resolution is. If your resolution is a smaller resolution, you might have kind of a, a little bit of a distorted view and you might need to kind of play around with that. But when it comes to editing, let's say for this one here, if and when 
you have elements that are like popping up or in the way, you can use the zoom and pan feature and you go here and you just move it up like that. So you can move it up. Obviously it crops out certain elements of the actual video, but then you remove the elements that are popping in and all that. So that's something good to know. I mean, I've made so many Prezi videos over the years that I've realized there are certain elements, certain things that you'll run into along the way that you'll never really know unless you actually do it. So like I said, you got to do it a few times, sometimes a few times, sometimes 10 times, sometimes 20 times until you perfect your own process. But that's fine. That's that's part of the game. And at the end of the day, you know, some of your videos that start out may be slow. Now, some people ask, okay, when you make videos, do you just uh, record the voice first and then you kind of show the Prezi in action? Or do you actually walk through while you're showing the Prezi? What I found to answer that, it's different from different people. Some people can do, you know, teach really, really fast and as they do the Prezi, and some people, as they start out, they have to actually read a script and then implement it and have one track as the audio and one track as the Prezi visual. So sometimes you might have to write out the script and read the script and put it down here. And then you have to go back and then record kind of the video of the Prezi and go along with the script. So it really depends on you and how you speak. Some of you might be comfortable with speaking like like me, I can just go straight in and teach. And some of you might not be comfortable and you might have to go with a script. Now, I will say, you know, it definitely takes practice and even sometimes making videos, it might be the 10th time. But at the end of the day, you have to practice just like riding a bicycle. Everything takes practice. So hopefully that teaches you a little bit about uh, how to turn your Prezi into a video.